infinite limits basically are saying that if you're taking a limit, that the answer can be infinity for a limit. Okay, technically it does not exist, but it can be infinity. So let's, so let's say we have a couple graphs here. Let's say you have a graph that looks like that, and then you have an asymptote, and then it looks like that. And then we have another graph that looks like that, and then looks like that. And we have another graph that goes like this, and then goes like this. If we're taking the limit as x approaches c, let's call this a, b, and c. If we're taking the limit as x approaches c, c being that dotted line, that vertical asymptote, okay, for a, the answer, if we take the limit as x approaches this dotted line, does not exist. For all these, do you understand the limit does not exist? But for graph A, it really does not exist. Because when you come from both sides of that dotted line, they get two different answers. So no matter what, you're never going to get an answer unless it's a one-sided limit. Now B, B, yes, the limit does not exist, but don't they both go to positive infinity? So my answer would be positive infinity, actually. The limit as x approaches that asymptote would be positive infinity. It tells you what the graph looks like. And C, well, this one, it doesn't exist, but we could describe it as they're both going to negative infinity. Infinite limits are basically a description of what the graph is doing. Even though the limit does not exist, it describes it. it gives you more info than just saying it doesn't exist. So if they both go the same direction, give it an answer. If they go in opposite directions, it doesn't exist. D and E does not exist. Now, again, as you can tell, we have vertical asymptotes. That's basically infinite limits deal with vertical asymptotes. These are vertical asymptotes. How do you know if we have a vertical asymptote? Well, if we have a function, it's always going to be a fraction. When you have a vertical asymptote, there'll be a fraction. And with this fraction, g of x cannot equal 0, and h of x does equal 0. So basically, if you look at a fractional equation, if the bottom equals 0 and the top does not, you'll have a vertical asymptote there. It'll make more sense when we talk about these two. So I want to find the vertical asymptote for this graph. So we look at this and think, oh, I want to know where h of x equals 0. Where h of x equals 0 will be my vertical asymptotes. Okay, h of x means the denominator. Where is the denominator equal to 0? So looking at this, you go, oh, okay, where does x squared equal 0? And where does 1 minus x equal 0? Those are possible vertical asymptotes. So these are my possible vertical asymptotes. It's where h of x, or the bottom, equals 0. So this answer, square root both sides, you got 0. Here, when you minus the 1 over, so you got x equals 1. Now, those are possible locations of vertical asymptotes. It's where the bottom equals 0. But the second stipulation is that g of x cannot equal 0. So when I plug in 0 to this function, f of 0 is going to be 2 plus 0 over 0 squared times 1 minus 0. Can you see I plug 0 into the function? That gives me 2 over 0, correct? When I plug in 0, I get 2 over 0. Is g of x not equal to 0? Is the top a constant? 
the bottom zero. So, is it a vertical asymptote? Yes, because there's a constant over a zero. Go to the next one. If you plug in f of 1, you get 2 plus 1 over 1 squared times 1 minus 1, which gives us 3 over 0. 3 over 0. Is that a number, a non-zero over 0? So would this be a vertical asymptote? Yes. So basically, you set the bottom equal to zero, and then you check those values to see if you get a non-zero over zero. Now, by the way, why did I set each piece equal to zero? Technically, look right here, if I set the bottom equal to zero, I forgot to mention this. If I set the bottom equal to zero, isn't this zero product property? Doesn't this have to equal zero? Or this has to equal zero? It's called zero product property. That's where I got my two equations. Forgot to mention that. Okay. Next one. Look at this. Let's set the bottom equal to zero. Where does that equal zero? Now, you could, there's multiple ways to do this. You could factor it, which I'm going to factor and solve it because factoring has some cancellations that's going to come up. So if I factor this, do you understand this becomes x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 4? That's called a difference of squares. That's t squared minus 4 squared, where this can still factor t minus 2, t plus 2, and it's t squared plus 4. Now, hopefully you can tell I factored this, I got all these values. So we're, this, this, and this equals 0 are possible vertical asymptotes. So let's do the first one. T minus 2 equals 0. That's when T equals what? 2. There's one possible vertical asymptote. Where T plus 2 equals 0 is T equals negative 2. Okay, there's another possible vertical asymptote. And the last one is where does T squared plus 4 equals 0? It'll never. Because watch what happens if I minus the 4 over. Could I ever square something and get a negative 4 out? So this has, this is not possible, basically. So my two possible vertical asymptotes, as of now, are 2 and negative 2. How do we verify they are actually vertical asymptotes? Well, those two values we plug in. So h of line there. h of 2 equals 2 squared minus 2 times 2 over 2 to the 4th minus 16. What's it look like we're getting? Is that 0 over 0? Uh-oh. Is that a vertical asymptote? No. That's called indeterminate form, which we'll talk about end of the year. That is actually not. So what that means is, uh-oh, cross that out. That is not a vertical asymptote. Got it? And then if we do h of negative 2, we get negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 over negative 2 to the 4th minus 16. That gives us actually 8 over 0. So are we okay? Yeah. So this one right here is the only vertical asymptote. Now let me show you something. We could also, besides doing this constant over 0 kind of idea, you could have also done this. If I factor the top, 
Do you see that right there? Take a t out, t minus two. Do you see the t minus two canceling with this t minus two? Which means, isn't this a removable discontinuity, a whole? Do you remember that? You actually could have spotted it that way. Again, by factoring the top, factoring the bottom, canceling out and realizing that one is not an asymptote, it's a whole. Anytime you can cancel something out, top and bottom, it is a whole. Again, this was the bottom, factored out. This was the top. So you could either think of it with factoring and canceling, or you can think of it with this um, idea of a zero over zero, eight over zero, a number over zero. Again, this one is not because you cannot have zero over zero to have a vertical asymptote. 